Okay, so Vertigis Studio at Stat Statistics Canada. My name is Peter McLaren. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Again, thank you, John and GoGMatics for putting together this great presentation or great, great event today. Today, I'm joined by my colleague, Steve Madison, who will be, be actually demonstrating the Statistics Canada Census Program Data Viewer. Before that, I would like to spend a little time introducing Vertigis Studio and the technology we provide. So Vertigis by North America, we're the developers of Vertigis Studio. Formerly known as Geocortex, Vertigis Studio is our new product suite brand name. Everything else is pretty much the same, but we've had a name change. We're still headquartered in Victoria, BC. We do have a regional office in Toronto where Steve and I work out of, and we offer web, mobile, GIS frameworks and solutions that extend ArcGIS. We are an Esri Platinum business partner, and we are a release ready ArcGIS online specialty, state and local government, and uh, ArcGIS marketplace uh, specialties. The most important thing, I guess, here is that being release ready, we will have an Esri, um, we will have our technology ready uh, within two weeks after the release of any Esri product. Uh, delivery. Here are some examples of our capabilities that we provide. At the center, you'll notice an accessibility icon. This is at the center of our development of products and applications, making it easy for authors to create information products for their end users for their ease of consumption. This is one of the key drivers that Vertiges, regardless of usability, they should be able to quickly and easily use the application regardless of ability. Here is a sampling of our customers in Canada. You may know some of them or actually work at one of these organizations. Today, we're focusing solely on Statistics, <laughs> statistics Canada. Where does Vertigia Studio fit in the Esri ecosystem from out of the box configurable apps sophisticated solutions and custom apps. With the development timeline on the bottom, we feel that we provide custom development uh, tools to fill the gap between easily configurable apps and very advanced custom solutions. All doing this by reducing the amount of time it takes to develop these applications. Through configuration and uh, advanced tools, Vertigia Studio makes it easy to design applications by leveraging consistent frameworks that use drag and drop, web-based designers for flexible custom development. On average, our customers are building fully customized applications in a third of the time it takes using these web-based configuration frameworks. Our customers take advantage of hundreds of out-of-the-box features and capabilities built and maintained by our developers to accelerate your app creation without having to maintain code. Our customers really are able to spend more time inventing instead of reinventing, focusing on adding business value to application rather than maintaining code. Vertigia Studio integrates your business systems, whether it's CityWorks, LaserFiche, NearMap, Oracle, from, uh, uh, sorry, Maximo. Uh, we do this through multiple approaches and we're always coming with new ways to streamline business systems integration. Vertigia Studio works on every platform. We allow our users to build widgets that support both Vertigia Studio viewers as well as Esri viewers, whether that be Experience Builder or Web App Builder. Uh, configure Configuring mobile apps is a breeze with Vertigis, and these support iOS, Windows, Android, and um, uh, the processes are supported through the addition of you know, advanced workflows. Uh, again, I'll just mention that uh, our technology uh, is, is uh, based on uh, web-based designers, that's a very important point, that work within ArcGIS Online or Enterprise. And building 
elegant apps is by no means uh, a reason not to have, you know, support for WAGAG2 compliant reasons or requirements offering. We offer screen reader and uh, keyboard support. Going back a little bit to these designers, the three things that are most important here, I think, are what you see is what you get as you develop your applications. Easy drag and drop and manage dev, stage, test, and production all within the designer, streamlining and improving your development experience. Although we have multiple tools to support various needs such as linear referencing, bind grain security, PDF reports, printing, today we will focus on our new web viewer as well as our custom widgets builder workflow. So going into Studio Web, here's where we build intuitive web-based, or sorry, WebGIS solutions that work within ArcGIS. We are able to meet unique requirements by configuring apps that confirm to your unique business process or UI, UX specifications. Make, a pro make, sorry, make your apps more approachable by configuring keyboard or sorry dashboards and KPI cards to enhance your end user experience. Streamline your GS development by using sophisticated configuration frameworks with dozens of out of the box tools. Configure web-based solutions using default templates and drag and drop interfaces or design apps from scratch using unique solutions. Modernize your GIS using the next generation capabilities from ArcGIS, uh, the ArcGIS API, uh, JavaScript 4.x, um, and modernize your GIS using the next generation uh, capabilities. Go, moving on to GIS, or sorry, to Vertigo Studio Workflow. Here's where we build custom widgets using flexible low code uh, framework to build ArcGIS based applications. Reduce the development time by leveraging a library of over 200 activities that can be changed together quickly to automate tasks. Build your business processes using a drag and drop interface that enables you to streamline complex requirements via configuration. Present users with dynamic forms that can handle logic validation to support operations such as searching for or editing features and automate end user experiences by building interactive widgets that are specifically designed for unique business processes. And finally, integrate the business systems, such as in this case, uh, Novolux uh, Elements XS. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Steve. But uh, my role here today is to really talk to you about, um, you know, uh, the use of Vertigo Studio at Statistics Canada. So, uh, as as we all know, uh, you know, StatsCan is is our is our national statistical office, and among other things, they are responsible for conducting uh, a national census every five years. And uh, a main objective of that census effort, uh, you know, is to help share the story of our country using census data, help uh, provide sort of a you know a detailed statistical portrait of Canada and its people. Uh, by sharing information about demographics, social, economic characteristics about, uh, about our great country. And there are a number of data visualization tools that StatsCan produces to help kind of communicate this data. CPT, CPDV, the Census Program Data Viewer, the application that you see here on your screen, uh, is the uh, agency's uh, primary map-based viewer, right, for interacting with statistical data in a map-based uh, dashboard. What you see here on screen uh, is the live application. This was released about, uh, oh, probably about a month and a half ago, I would say maybe two months ago. The Census Program Data Viewer is a public, uh, a public uh, application uh, hosted by Stats, uh, Stats Canada. Um, and I, I think just to sort of start, I think one of the interesting things to talk to you folks about is the backstory in terms of all the little things that, uh, that, that have gone on with this particular application. So this project with StatsCan started uh, back before the 2016 census was completed. StatsCan has a mandate, to, as I say, to, be, to have to share, disseminate this information gathered in the census with Canadians from coast to coast to coast. 
And when we took on this project with the uh, with the good people at Stats, uh, we you know we quickly encountered a lot of uh, let's call them constraints, yeah, in terms of how the application had to uh, be built. Uh, specifically, it had to adhere to the federal government's um, uh, robust <laughs> uh, design standards. It had to integrate within the context of uh, their web pages, like you see here. Uh, the application had to be available uh, en français, right? We are a uh, bilingual country, and in Canada, it's uh, necessary for our applications to be disponible en français and anglais. Donc, pour, les, pour nos collègues qui sont, qui sont français, tu vois ici que l'application est <coughs> totalement disponible en français, right? So the entire GUI is available uh, in French. Uh, all of the data is available uh, in, in French, uh, available in uh, both, uh, both official languages. Now, uh, other key things that we had to consider when we put together the application with StatsCan was uh, obviously because it's public facing, we had to have an emphasis on um, uh, accessibility. We had to meet uh, the government's uh, standards for accessibility. So Vertigus Studio fortunately is uh, WCAG compliant. It meets the government's accessibility standards uh, pretty much out of the box. There was some configuration required, uh, but you'll notice that as I you know, tab through the application here, um, I can do that without the use of a mouse. Um, you know, the application, as you see here on screen, as I, as I, as I tab through, uh, we've integrated skip links. Um, the application also works with screen reader technology. So for example, if you, you know, have difficulty seeing or whatnot, you can, um, you can integrate with the application uh, that way. Uh, and probably the biggest challenge, well, there are there other challenges as well. Uh, another key challenge was that this technology, this application had to integrate with the government's uh, existing investment in uh, the underlying Esri platform, right? They've made significant uh, investments in Esri technology and they wanted to be able to leverage that capability inside their web app. Uh, fortunately, this application that you see here on screen is 100% aligned with Esri's latest uh, technology. We are a platinum business partner. As Esri upgrades their technology, uh, we upgrade ours. So StatsCan is in lockstep with the uh, great enhancements that Esri is constantly making to their tech. Let's talk scalability. There is a lot of data available in this application. And because it's public facing, there, 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 there can be millions of people accessing this thing at any given time. You know, this thing was architected to be, to, to work very, very fast. Uh, uh, for end users, but probably the biggest challenge that we've uh, that we encountered with this project was how do you take the complexity of a GIS, yeah, the complexity of a GIS, and put that into the hands of non-GIS professionals, Joe Public, Joe and Jane Public, yeah. How do you take statistical data and make that available to Canadians in a way that actually allows them to to gain a deeper understanding of what's going on? So we put a lot of we worked very closely with stats to really emphasize uh, or streamline the way in which people could interact with the application, but still keep it simple enough that they would understand how to work it, but 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 still allow for that complexity that that, that only GIS analysis can provide. Okay, now having said all that, I'm going to walk you through the uh, the GUI and and Pete, feel free to interject here. I, I tend to go on and on, and I know we're on a tight timeline, so. Uh, just, just maybe keep me keep me honest if you wouldn't mind. When we first launched the application, you can see that it automatically defaults to uh, to our country, and uh, it automatically shows population percentage change between 2016 to 2021. That is the uh, the statistical indicator, the data element that uh, that opens up by default. Now, uh, as an end user uh, on this map. It's got all your standard map components, right? You've got you've got your dynamic legend here on the right hand side. You've got uh, you've got the ability to open up base maps. Um, you've got the ability, well, to toggle your your legend on and off. Um, and we've also introduced an I want to menu, which is which is really intended to just sort of walk the uh, the end user through uh, the simple kinds of analyses and changes that you can make uh, to the map. I'll come back to that in just a moment. But first, I'd like to show you some of the dashboard components uh, that were configured using the Vertigo Studio uh, uh, platform. 
So one of the first uh, buttons available to the end user is this ability, or one of the enhancements that's been added to CPDV is this ability to uh, select between census vintages, if you will, <laughs> right? So we could take a look at this map and, and we can see what the population change looked like from 2011 to 2016, the previous census uh, census year. Uh, during that time, you could see that uh, New Brunswick, for example, was one of the probably the only province uh, here to actually uh, lose people. Now we can compare that to say uh, 2021, hit the apply button and we'll get the current picture, right? So New Brunswick no longer losing population, rather adding people, but Newfoundland, Labrador and uh, uh, Northwest Territories, um, you know, now, now, now losing people. So it's just a nice way to be able to help kind of communicate the story between various census years. And so you can imagine that this is only going to grow uh, as, as we complete more and more uh, census. Uh, census. Um, moving across the, uh, the buttons here uh, on the screen, uh, we can select or modify uh, indicators. So, uh, you know, I've got this ability here to, actually before, before I even show you that, I'd like to just uh, maybe drop down a little bit uh, and show you uh, some of the uh, comparison metrics that they've integrated into the, the tabular capabilities of, of Vertiga Studio. So you can see that our geographic focus uh, is currently set to Canada. Uh, the indicator is the population percentage change between 2016 to 2021. Um, and uh, I can come across the top here and we can look at related charts, right? So we can see the difference between the, between the census years. Um, they've automatically um, uh, compiled the top geographic areas for this particular uh, statistical indicator. Uh, so if we're looking, for example, at the census, di census division area across the country, we can see that uh, Mirabelle, Quebec, um, you know, sort of led the way. Um, if we look, were to look at the data from a federal electoral district, we can see the trends uh, with Edmonton leading the way across the country. Moving over to the right, uh, if we look at census subdivisions geography, we can see that, uh, uh, I'll probably do this a disservice, but uh, Kapoyan First Nation uh, in Alberta, you know, has experienced uh, tremendous growth uh, over the last census period. Uh, and then um, over here at the bottom, we can see uh, at the uh, at the census agglomeration area, uh, Squamish, uh, Squamish BC is leading the way. They've connected and made available all the data inside their data tables available. And all these data tables are kind of neat because what you can do here uh, you know, as we can, uh, you know, for example, we can open up the, um, the uh, action menu uh, on these data tables and we can export this information to a CSV, we could export to an Excel file, uh, heck, we could even export to a shape file, which is pretty neat, right? So now we can actually take this map information and we can move this into uh, ArcGIS and, 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 and carry on and do uh, whatever uh, analysis uh, we need to do. Certain indicators have quick facts. This one doesn't, but uh, there'll be more added as we go. And you can toggle and look at the data quality uh, points, right, that they're making available. And then just some notes in terms of uh, how, to, uh, how to interpret the, uh, the data in question. Now, I'll also point out that the um, the charts that have been integrated into this dashboard are all dynamic, right? So you can see here that as we uh, pan across the, uh, the chart, um, the geography uh, in question uh, will, be, uh, will be highlighted. Okay, so let's go back now to the map viewer and we'll take a look at uh, some, other, uh, some other data. So, I've shown you how we can toggle between census years, but let's look at the actual indicator data. And let's say, for example, so, so right now, Statistics Canada has uploaded uh, data from their population and dwellings data sets. Uh, over the next few months, Statistics Canada will be releasing more and more data from the 2021 census uh, into the application. Currently, they're only showing population and dwellings. But you can see what we've done to try to facilitate the way in which we interact with the application. We've developed what we call workflows, right? These are just um, ways in which it, we're just sort of walking the end user through the process of selecting uh, 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 statistical indicators. 
So we'll hit the next button and it comes back and it says, okay, well, what do you want to look at from the population and dwellings data set? Well, let's say that we're interested in looking at population density per uh, square kilometer. We'll go ahead and, uh, and, and, and apply that to the map. And you can see already that the, uh, that the uh, legend has already changed. We'll give, a, we'll give the map a second to catch up here and basically redraw itself showing the census subdivision level of uh, geography uh, on the map. Oh, population density per square kilometer. Oh, I know what I did wrong. That was my fault, not the application's fault. I need to set the geographic level, yeah? So what I wanna do here is I wanna actually uh, set the set census subdivision as the geography that I'd like to see drawn uh, on the map. We'll hit the apply button and the map will redraw with the census subdivision geography uh, displayed, uh, displayed on the map. It'll just take a second because there are quite a few uh, CSDs there we go. So you can see here that uh, we're now displaying all the CSDs across the country. We'll zoom right into Southern Ontario, Southern Quebec. Now, what's neat about this interactive application is as we change the geography, as we change the statistical indicators, the charts are automatically updated as well. And so you can see here on screen that we've got these logarithmic charts, right? Showing the uh, highest uh, uh, values for population per square kilometer broken out by CSD. Uh, I can double click on these and uh, I can zoom in on that chart and I can see uh, other comparable CSDs um, uh, that match the, the particular CSD that was, show, uh, that was shown here. Uh, I can also show uh, selected data. Now, uh, I haven't actually selected something, so let's go ahead and uh, do that. So one of the neat things about this application is that you can come in here and uh, we, can, we can basically tell it to find a place, right? So I'll start typing uh, Ottawa, and we're interested in looking at the uh, census subdivision for uh, Ottawa. We'll set that as our focus of analysis uh, on the application. So Ottawa now is set as the focus of analysis uh, you know, for the work that we wanna do uh, uh, with the application. Now, from here, from here, I can actually start to add uh, comparison areas. So the application will automatically take the Ottawa CSD and compare it to the country as a whole, as well as the province. But uh, I can add comparison areas. To do that, uh, I can come in here, open up this workflow, start to type uh, other communities that I'm interested in adding. So I want to add Toronto to the comparison list. Steve, right, so let's compare. Question, Steve, we're cutting, cutting into the questions period. So. Um, maybe make that uh, the last comparison. So, so Toronto was added to the comparison, and I just wanted to uh, point out, folks, that the map is also dynamic, right? So I can come in here and I could click on an area uh, on the map, and you'll see that it brings up the statistics for uh, the London area. We'll add this to the comparison list. And you can see that these CSDs are highlighted here uh, in the magenta color uh, on the logarithmic scale. I could also look at the, uh, uh, the individual data and you'll see that it pulses the, uh, the polygon on the map to let us know uh, where these areas uh, uh, are located. So I guess we'll wrap it up here. This is a public facing application. We can share the, we can share the, the link with all of you so that you can um, kick the tires and explore this wonderful application that Statistics Canada has uh, put together, uh, because uh, believe me, there there's a there's a lot here uh, that that you can uh, that you can work with. Uh, and it's also uh, our data. Application. It's also our data. You know, it's the data that um, we collectively as Canadians have submitted to Stats Canada, and it's about us. So <laughs> learn more about your community and uh, the ones nearby by looking at this application. It really is very slick, Steve. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it is slick and there'll be more and more data added uh, as StatsCan starts to release more data sets uh, through the application. So a really good way to, to, to learn all about uh, our, our great country. Okay, um, are we taking questions, Pete? Yeah, I think so, uh, John. Yeah, we've questions? got a little bit of time. We're, we're, uh, we're definitely open for some questions. Folks use the Q&A tool. I think I'd like to kick a question off. That's a really interesting federal government project. 
Uh, you talked about standards uh, while working with the, the federal government. Can you tell us a little bit more about why uh, and how uh, Verti GIS, uh, Vertigis, sorry, um, is so good? Why you talked about it almost being out of the box? I would imagine that must be very an exciting prospect for other departments potentially. It is. Um, you, you know, I working with Statistics Canada was uh, was you know was, was a fabulous experience because it allowed us to really kind of push the limits of how Geocort excuse me used to be called Geocortex how Vertigo Studio could be adapted right to meet uh, you know what we would consider to be rather rigid uh, design requirements that the government had and and I'm pleased to say that we were able to meet uh, all of those you know using a configuration first uh, approach. So I think one of the I think it's safe for me to say that one of the one of the key aspects that that really resonated with uh, our project sponsor was, um, you know, that they faced this mandate to actually get the data out into the hands of Canadians. They were concerned about meeting some pretty aggressive development timelines. They were concerned about building applications from scratch. Um, you know, they were looking for something that was a little more that was well tested, right? Uh, and so we were able to adapt Vertigo Studio, um, you know, to to meet the government standards and to get an application uh, into into this department's hands uh, on time on budget. For the um, for the GIS technicians out there, the the developers, what's the uh, learning curve like with your with your tools? For, for GIS developers, curve. GIS technicians, um, the learning curve is actually quite low, and 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 they may be thinking, well, okay, I mean, is this is this an alternative to uh, custom development? And the answer to that is it's not. Uh, one of the cool things about uh, Vertigo Studio is that it is, a, it is a, a web application development framework, but it's a, it's a framework with a trap door. So it's completely extensible. Uh, if you need to develop your uh, own activities uh, for the workflow module, if you need to write your own code and uh, to extend uh, Vertigo Studio, that is definitely possible. But I would say that the effort required to get going with Vertigo Studio is quite minimal. The most complex component would be workflow, which is basically designing applications or functionality using a sort of a flip chart type approach, right? Where you're kind of linking activities together and, and programmatically putting it all together. Fantastic. Well, I want to thank uh, Vertigus for being a silver sponsor of uh, Geo Ignites Winter Geo. This event would not be possible without that support, keeping it open and free. Is there anything in close that you'd like to add before we go to the break? Peter? Give us a call. We're ready to talk to you about whatever your needs might be. Um, and uh, yeah, want to talk to, want to talk to you. So yeah, give us a call. Yeah.